here in the first uh, minutes of an intense thermal, which I will now speed up. So you got uh, two pretty good teams, one led by Bichnik, the other one by Carpenter, Carpenter X, and they'll uh, they're playing X2. No nukes, so a whole bunch of RD and experimentals and shields are expected. But here we see around minute four some T1 up in the middle. We got uh, some Mantis staring at some UEF units, some uh, strikers from UEF, some NGs, as well as a PD. So no early confrontation at minute five. Now at minute eight, almost minute nine, there are some. T2 flapjacks, T2 missile launchers from uh, EVA or Carpenter X. They shot off some rockets, but still not much action. So both of these teams basically equal in the first 10 minutes. I uh, see some first kills of the game, first exchange. Really no clear winner. See some stationary PDs being built. Lots of plans for defense. On minute 13, the first experimentals from Carpenter team. Got two Monkey Lords and a GC going up front. Still, same fight where a bunch of T2 cruise missiles are being shot back and forth. Really no clear winner. So now three Monkey Lords and a GC. The other team at the same time has got a chicken moving up. And also have a lot of UEF uh, PD from Bitchnik. It's got some T3, some T2, so lots of shields. You can see this is really nice to get a bunch of drones guarding your ACU. You can build things fast. Now our first experimental confrontation. Basically uh, 2v1 here and uh, chicken dies well 3v1. Two monkey lords and a GC, plus a bunch of uh, T3 PD. It's a nice chunk of mass. And now minute 15, we see the standoff. Four experimentals versus a base, also protected by a few experimentals. But I got a whole bunch of a T3 PD, just in case these decide to move in. If we look at what uh, Carpenter is making, he's making the biggest gun in the game, the Mav Maver, here at 16th minute. And uh, his ally, the undead uh, green, has got uh, rapid fire. So two very expensive projects very early on. If we look at what's happening for uh, Bitchniks, then we got Anarchy here in the corner working on a Paragon, basically infinite resources. And of course experimentals from both teams. Not much in the way of shooting. There are some T2 Arty here shooting at the experimentals. See it all in the distance. And now at minute 20, the first uh, T3 Arty is being finished by Evo X. He's got Seraphim. It's protected by quite a few Seraphim shields. So it's about to come online. So this can fire all the way across the map. If we look at Bichnik's team, he's got his ally in the back here bat bat nine and nine uh, he's also got a UEF T3 PD so now both teams have the capability basically lob shells and you can see one fly it looks like he is targeting anarchy he's going out to this paragon of course this paragon has quite a bit of protection if you look in the middle still a pretty big standoff looks like uh, Carpenter's team does have control of middle and a fat boy is taking some free shots so it probably won't be able to do too much damage well it's actually going to get a retaliation and it will be running away or maybe not Yeah, now the fat boys realize they need to run away and turn around. However, at the same time, the 
these T3 defense is going to do its thing and kill that GC. So these guys chased a little too far, and the monkey lords would turn around and run away. It's not really a fight, more like a confrontation. Of course, one experimental paid with its life. And now we see these shells being lobbed back and forth. And actually, the rapid fire here, you see a whole bunch of shells coming in. They're all going after this paragon. Take a closer look at Undead's base. We see a whole bunch of shields, power generators, mass extractors, and the rapid artillery. So, a very expensive unit. That's the one that's shooting at the Paragon that's across the map. You can see the rapid fire. But quite a few uh, shields here. Seraphim shields, the most powerful shields. And they're doing his, their job so far. Now the Paragon is built at minute 24. And now uh, Anarchy has infinite resources and can build whatever he wants. It's all about build power for him now. now here in the middle we got the Fat Boys pushing forward. If, after this first uh, GC retaliation was crushed. Fad boys moved back in. Not really a big loss for either team, just making sure the middle isn't held by anyone. And now here at a minute 25 and a half, we got the uh, Mavar from Carpenter is finished. That's a powerful unit. And the question is what uh, this team is shooting at. It looks like they're shooting at separate targets. We see the undead here uh, with a rapid fire going after the paragon while it looks like the maver is going after the middle. Actually some rapid fire is firing there too. And here in the back we got the two seraphim uh, T3 already as well as the third one being built. So quite a few shields, a nice installation. And now we see also some T3 from Aeon. Quite a bit of firepower, but it is being defended. Now it looks like that entire team, Carpenter's team, has focused completely on the middle, taking out this defense, perhaps anticipating pushing with their units, and that's exactly what all these monkey lords are doing. And they will run over the fat boys. You can see that's the Maver in the distance whole bunch of shells so the chickens and the GC's are retreating there's a big uh, column of uh, spider bots coming in some chickens just standing there now this chicken here is gonna die and leave a wreck that's gonna actually hurt whatever walks by it and you see some of the chicken uh, spider bots are actually getting killed you can see there's a lot, still a lot of firepower from the T3PD and the other monkey lords decided to just turn around no reason to die for no reason Now, uh, if we look at the back of uh, Evo's team, the so Carpenter X team, got a whole bunch of Artie, so T3, Artie and Mavar, some Rapid Fire, some T3, whole bunch of shields. Really a good looking base. We got uh, a whole bunch of build power right here, some UEF kennels. All right, minute 30. If we look at this Paragon and Anarchy's base, uh, Carpenter's team decided to focus in on this region, and a lot of the shields are actually uh, dropping. But it's they did, it wasn't quite enough firepower. Maybe another Maver would have done the trick. See these shields holding out. 